Hi friends, hi, hello, how are you all doing? I'm August, this is Cozy Rosie Reads, and this is the start of another weekly reading vlog. It is Sunday morning, I have my trusty iced coffee with me. It is actually Father's Day today, and my dad has requested that we travel to a little town further outside of our city that we went to all the time. This used to be like our go-to place for Father's Day or just summer afternoons. So I'm really excited to go back there. We're gonna have a picnic for Father's Day, and then he has requested that we go to the city's antique mall. Ah! I'm so jazzed. I'm so jazzed. I haven't been to this antique mall in like two years. So I'm going to be getting ready to go there in like an hour or so. I just thought I would start this vlog off with talking with you all, chatting about the books that I'm currently reading, what's happening in my life. I am going to be super, super duper honest. The next two days, I'm really not looking forward to. I'm not going to lie. I have severe, like almost debilitating anxiety about my next two days. I have a lot of uncertainty and things coming up in my life that are going to be like kind of addressed in the next three days. Just send me some good energy, please. Just send me like a little virtual hug. Hi friends, editing August here. I just wanted to give a quick update. Everything that I was extremely disgustingly nervous about ended up working out really, really well. I am really filled with gratitude that the awful worst case scenario where my anxious brain took me ended up not happening. I just wanted to put that in this vlog because I think it's really important that we continue to talk about anxiety and make it known that while it's very, very normal to have anxiety, it's okay to feel nervous, it's okay to feel scared, it's okay to feel sad and frustrated and angry. I'm just feeling a lot, 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 lot lot better. This was a culmination of like two weeks of uncertainty to build up. And now I feel like I was able to kind of release that anxiety a little bit. And I just really, really appreciate you all. So editing August out. I don't really know what my week looks like in terms of my mental stability then. So for now, I just want to start this vlog off with a little happy, cheery, you know, being outside, enjoying a picnic with my family, and then going to an antique mall. I mean, that sounds great. That's a great way to kind of ignore and push aside some like creeping intrusive thoughts. So before we leave for the antique mall, I do want to quickly chat about the freaking, freaking amazing books I'm reading right now. I am literally blown away literally blown away by the books that I'm reading right now. So the first book is Gut Symmetries by Jeanette Winterson. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. I cannot express how much I love this. Like this is the style, the 100% like to a T style of books that I really really love, but they take a lot out of me because they're really intense. The language is really intense. It's written almost like in prose and it's very lyrical. There's a lot of really really strong hidden messages beneath the words and it's like I'm annotating almost every single page and I haven't annotated a book physically in so long so it's just been so much fun to like pick up a pen and like actually underline passages. This writing style, Jeanette Winterson, she is like there with like probably one of my favorite authors and this is only the first book I have read and I haven't even finished it. I am only on page 77 which is the start of like chapter four or five I believe and I am reading this so slowly because it is really dense in the topics, but the writing style, like while reading it, it moves so fast for me and I, I, I'm just loving it so much. So when I was writing, I did write a lot and it's something that I would love to pick up again, but like I feel like my writing style was so similar to this. I'm definitely not saying I made Jeanette Winterson, oh my god no, but like the, the way that sentences are structured, how they flow, the dense topics, that are, you know, like I said, kind of beneath the surface of these more like lyrical, fantastical, whimsical kind of words and writing. This is kind of the style that I emulated without ever knowing there was an author out there who was like literally perfect for what I enjoy. It is so beautiful, but I definitely can't read books like this all the time because it is, it is exhausting. It is, it is dense, it's deep, it's gritty. And sometimes in between reading books like this, you just need something fun and light and like more plot driven. So I'm freaking loving this. So this book follows a young woman who is on a cruise ship that is all about physics. Like it's a physics themed kind of cruise ship and she's a speaker there. That's how we open up. It's on this ship called the QE2. And she kind of meets another professor there who's giving lectures and they get into an affair. Uh, the male professor is married to a woman and things just happen 
we're kind of bouncing perspectives too because then we get a perspective from the woman who has been cheated on and she's like really upset and angry and frustrated and doesn't know what to do with her marriage. It's just so interesting because I don't want to say that this is more character driven because it kind of is but at the same time like it there is still a plot but there are just a lot of conversations about physics and science and life and love and a lot of like kind of they talk in very like poetic ways that feels very like not really believable or realistic but I freaking love that like I love that stuff I would kind of compare the dialogue in here to Our Tragic Universe by Scarlett Thomas which was one of my five star reads at the beginning of this year I believe in like March so I'm just I'm just really enjoying this I'm really curious to see where it goes because on the back it does say that the young professor who's on the cruise ship does actually end up falling in love with the man that she was having an affair with she falls in love with his wife so it's like this really confusing triangle thing and there was actually a really good passage in here about that triangle thing let me see if i can find it okay this is a really good example of the writing style that i'm trying so hard to eloquently put into words and i'm failing and it reads if you want to know how a mistress marriage works ask a triangle in euclidean geometry the angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees and parallel lines never meet everyone knows the score and the women are held in tension away from one another the shape is beguiling, and it could be understood as a new geometry of family life. Unfortunately, Euclidean theorems work only if space is flat. In curved space, the angles overadd themselves, and parallel lines always meet. His wife, his mistress, met. <gasps> like, I, I love that so much! Give me math, give me science, give me physics in freaking poetry form, in beautiful narrative, like, gorgeous writing, lyrical, whimsical, bizarre, absurd, weird. I, I, I love it. So yeah, I'm thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying this book. So while that book is so dense, I was like, okay, I think I want another book that will kind of like, I can read at the same time, but maybe I can read a lighter book, quote unquote. And then I remembered, this book is not on my June TBR, but then I remembered that I had this and I was like, oh my gosh, this would be perfect. And that is Summer by Carl Ove Knosgaard. This is a book, a beautiful book that I found at Dollar Tree in one of my very, very first vlogs I ever did. And I will link that down below. I think I have grown and changed so much with like my comfortability of vlogging and stuff, but feel free to watch that if you would like. It is titled Summer and it is absolutely gorgeous paintings that are inside of here as well. So there are paintings, like full page spreads in this book. This is separated into the three months of summer, June, July, and August. So there are passages and huge chunks of this book that are dedicated to certain months. And I was like, oh my gosh, I should read this because it's June, I should finish the June section this month and just keep reading each section per month. So at the start of each one, there's this beautiful painting and in the corner here it reads June. It is just so, so beautiful, so stunning. And last night I was like, okay, I'm gonna start this before bed. And I got 31 pages in and it's so freaking good that look who's annotating again. Look who's annotating. So <laughs> while I was looking for something lighter, summery, you know, easy going, I ended up just falling head over heels into this book and starting to annotate it. And I'm like, dang it. But I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful to have such amazing books. But this one is super interesting. These are like two to four page like mini essays about Carl's life. Um, just different things that he's either written in the month of June or just kind of emanate a summary feeling. And it talks about his childhood. He talks like the first story in here is about lawn sprinklers. And you're like, okay, cool, cute. What a nice little concept. But then it talks about how as a child, lawn sprinklers were like the most magical thing in the world. And then he reflects upon like, oh, I totally forgot that I, I have my own sprinkler now. Like I'm an adult. I'm over 30 years old. I have my own sprinkler and it, it brings me no joy. Like I, I don't think about it. And so he just like reminisces on childhood and when do we transition from like in awe of something and wanting something so bad and admiring it and seeing it from a distance to all of a sudden being the owner of said thing or having it in your life and it just becomes normalized. Um, it's just so beautiful. I really, really love this writing style. 
it is a very kind of like stream of consciousness, a lot of run-on sentences, and it's just very nostalgic, it's very observant, it's very much like observational kind of writing, and then just kind of observing the thoughts that come from it. So it is just really, really good. I'm, I'm enjoying it so much. I do believe that he has a book for every single season, so there's summer, winter, fall, and spring. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he wrote these for his children. Um, as kind of like a reflection about his own life, about his memories, about his thought process, which I just think is really cool. And it is, it is so enjoyable so far. I'm hoping it doesn't lose its charm for me. It's just really unique. Technically it is like nonfiction, I think. Like it feels very nonfiction-y. They feel like essays. I'm not sure how to categorize this, but I am thoroughly enjoying it. I'm really, really liking it. So those are the two books that I'm currently reading. They are both gonna take me a long time because I am falling head over heels in love with them. And I'm definitely been taking my time annotating them and really like just noticing how I feel while reading them because they're just so good. And they match my outfit very well. Look at that. Look at that, that's amazing. So yes, and then this little stack right here behind my iced coffee. These are the three books that I have left to read in June. And we only have like a week left in June and I'm getting really nervous about this pile. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just reading such great literature and I'm a little nervous that I'm not going to be able to get to all of these before the end of this month, which will break my heart because I genuinely really, really, really want to read these. So uh, we'll see. We'll see. You know what? If anything, I think I actually might bring The Universe of Us by Lang Leave to Father's Day Picnic because it's it's poetry it's gonna be a lot easier for me to read and I probably won't annotate this copy. So it'll be easier to fall into and out of this book, you know, because when you're hanging out with people while reading, it's easy to just kind of like, huh, what'd you say? Aha, uh -huh, interact, back to reading. I'm rambling at this point. I actually think I might bring this and so I can at least get this one off my list and then I will only have two books left. Thank you so much for being here for supporting, for watching, for being just such kind, lovely humans. I, I really appreciate you. I hope you're doing really, really well wherever you are.
matches your shirt. It's pretty. Uh, okay. Cool. It looks like someone colored it in with a colored pencil. Oh boy, um, that book was awful! No, 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 bad. I read some out loud to my sister. What did you think of it? Oh. <laughs> I have little words. Little words. <laughs> little words. Uh, you, put words. It, you put it really well that the narrator or the author sounds very manipulative in relationships. Yes. It kind of reminded me of like poorly written Facebook um, posts, I guess. Yes. Uh, Facebook updates. Which I think would actually be a funny concept for a poetry book. Yeah. But you could probably do it better than this. <laughs> yeah. You'd have to do it like ironically, mm -hmm. but still making it still making it art. Yeah. Yeah. And this definitely. did not. So we're going to a little free library now. <laughs> donating this, it back. Donating it back and moving on. So we gotta move on. We gotta let go. We gotta let go. It wasn't for us. Nope. Send it back into the universe, <laughs> the universe of us. It, it's meant for someone else. Yeah.
long de la rue Saint-Vincent. Diadème sur tes cheveux roux. La lune trop rousse de gloire éclabousse. Et de la butte sont dures aux miséreux. Les ailes des... Et sous ta caresse, je sens une ivresse qui m'anéantit. Hi friends, it is Monday afternoon now. It is 3.30. I am just making myself some lunch. I filmed a video. It was my <laughs> very late Gemini book recommendation. So I'll link that video down below if you want to watch it. Totally understand if you don't because it is late and today is actually the start of cancer season. So I'm behind. I am sitting down and editing that video right now, and while I do so, I'm gonna eat my lunch, which I will show you momentarily, because it looks freaking delicious, and I'm ready for it to get into my tummy. So this morning, I woke up with a lot of anxiety, a lot of anxiety, and to calm myself, I put on my Parisian French album from the 1960s on my record player, and I had a dance party, and then I had to cut my own hair. Um, it was just a little way for me to kind of like try to romanticize my life a little bit and feel a little bit better, but I cut my bangs, looking pretty good, and then I really needed a trim. I had so many split ends, so I was able to cut that today. Um, just like an inch or so off and it feels so much healthier. It always amazes me how much like softer my hair feels after doing that. So I'm gonna eat and watch my video. I was able to read just one chapter of Gut Symmetries this morning. I am still really, really enjoying it. I'm getting really nervous that I won't be able to finish my books, all the books I wanna read by the end of this month. I'm getting really nervous. This book is just taking me a long time because it is so dense and difficult to read and super enjoyable, but it's not like a page turner. So I'm taking it very, very slowly, but I was able to get an extra chapter in and I'm really hoping I have time to read it later today. But yeah, that's been my day and now on to some editing. So this is my lunch. We have an everything bagel, a tomato from the farmer's market, avocado, and then these are my vegan light life hot dogs. I freaking love them. And then I popped them on a skillet on the oven and just kind of toasted, roasted them a little bit in the skillet. So I'm gonna eat this very messily um, and edit. <laughs>
Howdy friends, it is Tuesday afternoon now. <laughs> it's like 1 p.m. and I have spent my entire morning, my entire morning, reading and finishing Gut Symmetries by Jeanette Winterson. I just finished it, literally just finished it. My thoughts are a little scattered about it, but I do want to take the time to talk to you all about it since I just finished it. Obviously I'll have more fleshed out thoughts in my June wrap up video, but I think I'm gonna give this like four stars. I have never annotated a book as much as I did this. There were so many beautiful passages or one-liners in here that I was like, ah, oh! and I just annotated the absolute crap out of this book. Jeanette Winterson's writing style is like almost 100% my style of what I enjoy reading. When I write, this is kind of similar to how I like to write, but it wasn't a five star. Um, I thought that the plot was super interesting. I really liked where this went story-wise though. I thought it was super interesting. It was really vague and meta and bizarre and I, I really, really liked that. But um, there were a lot of parts in here that felt like I was really chugging along to get through the book. Around like the 150 page mark, I started to get like a little bored. It started to feel a little laborious. It started to feel um, just dry and kind of meandering. I didn't really know where it was going. So it wasn't a fully enjoyable read. It was definitely difficult to read. This writing style is all over the place. It's really hard to keep like one single thought in this writing style. So sometimes you tend to lose the point. You tend to lose the thread of the narrative, but I personally really like that style. So if you're not into really kind of like purple prose, wordy, abstract, super surreal, bizarre writing style and story, then I would not recommend this book to you. But overall, it was just like really interesting. It was such a unique read. I want to read more by Jeanette Winterson because I think I might connect with maybe some of her other works. I just think that this one could have pulled out like maybe even like a hundred pages. It's only 230 pages long, but I think it actually could have been shorter and been more impactful. There were just some parts that I felt were a little not necessary, but overall I, I, I did enjoy it, but it just wasn't a full five star. I went into it really predicting it would be a five star read, but four stars is still really, really good. Um, we'll see how much I think about it in the next few days, but I am just like, really proud that I was able to finish this today. It's like I said, it's 1 p.m. All I've been doing this morning and this afternoon has been reading and then I, it is really really cold. The past two days I've woken up and it has been absolutely freezing. Like I know it's June but it feels like fall and it's been kind of nice. I love fall and so this morning I put on my Twin Peaks soundtrack on vinyl and I just really recommend that soundtrack while reading something as like bizarre and quirky and strange as this like Twin Peaks soundtrack like Angelo Badalamenti and Julie Cruz and like jazz and like David Lynch vibes like it just worked really really well with this <laughs> it paired very very nicely so yeah I, I'm really happy that I finished this I think now I have two books left on my June TBR so I think I'm gonna pick up the Midnight Library by Matt Haig next. This is a little bit shorter. I think I can actually make this one work in the next like few days before the end of June. So I'm gonna read this next, which just means that I have one book left on my June TBR that just might have to go back on my shelves, which breaks my heart because I really, really want to read that book, but it's bigger. And I've just been noticing like this summertime or maybe the past few months, I just like really feel super reluctant to pick up bigger books. But that's something that I really like to read in like early fall into winter. Like I like reading chunkier books in those times. So I know it's a phase that will pass, but the book that I have to put back onto my bookshelves is Jam on the Vine by LaShonda Catrice Barnett. I really, really want to read it, but it is bigger. So I definitely think that I need to be in a better mindset. And then maybe for my July TBR challenge, I will just kind of focus on maybe picking some shorter books because I've just been really enjoying shorter books lately. And I just genuinely, like most of my favorite books of all time are usually pretty damn short. So I'm gonna give this a go next. I did chat about this one in my 
June um, TBR challenge video, which I will link down below for you all. But um, I actually found this book in a little free library, which is a really, really great find. So many people, like it feels like almost everybody has read this book. So I'm just really lucky that I can pick it up and I can read it for myself and come up with my own thoughts and ideas about it without having to pay a penny. This was for free. So I am gonna hop into this next. I am looking forward to it and then we'll see, but yeah. So since I've spent the whole day so far just reading, I am gonna go ahead and get ready for the day. I have two appointments today, the appointments that have been giving me a lot of anxiety. So I have to go get ready for that. And then um, either I'll check in with you all later today or just in case, I might just sign off right now. So if I do end up having to leave, thank you all so incredibly much for being here. Thank you for staying tuned. I hope you all are doing incredibly well. Thanks so much for watching this video and I will see you all again very soon in my next one. Stay cozy, my friends. Bye.